gentlemen, thank you very much for coming to Velvet Rope Marketing for Fitness Professionals. We really appreciate you being here. My name is Jim Labadee, and I am here with my esteemed colleague, Mr. Ryan Lee. And we are going to talk a great deal tonight about how to set up your business. How are you going to put a velvet rope around it so you literally have people begging you to become, uh, they're begging to be your client. That's what this is all about, is really how to create a service business that uh, people just can't wait to get inside. So if you've ever seen a, a business with a velvet rope, like a nightclub, something like that, this is literally the picture you're going to have in your head, is that people are going to be wanting to get into something that they, they can't have. So I'm going to introduce my friend, Ryan Lee. Ryan, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Thank you. Dan, if you could uh, put a little forward on us. Thank you very much. Uh, as Jim said, my name is Ryan Lee. Obviously, all of you guys in here, I know, you know me. I know you. I've been in the fitness industry for over 10 years. I uh, started off as a trainer, uh, went to information products on the internet. So I've now my business really a lot is helping you guys make more money in the fitness industry and, and transforming everyone from fitness, from personal trainers to fitness entrepreneurs. And all of you are sort of heading on that track, which is nice. And uh, obviously, one of my main site now is ryanlee.com. You can find all my products there. And pass it back to Jim. Yep. Again, my name is Jim Labadee. I am one of Ryan's uh, original customers. I bought one of his information products, fitness info products, and I got into the business of creating information products. Before that, I had a very successful personal training business, in-home personal training business in Tampa, Florida called Achieve Total Fitness. And one of the approaches that I have used and that Ryan have used as well is creating the velvet rope around your business. Uh, so that's something that I have used in the past uh, for selling, for marketing, things of that nature. You can find more about me at trainandgrowrich.com. And that being said, we're going to uh, introduce our uh, esteemed panel of, of guests. Yes. So what, uh, what we'll do is if you guys just want to just introduce yourselves, just say your name, the business you do, just you know, a little 30 second introduction. We'll start here with Dan and then we'll just go around the table. Okay, I'm Dan Huff. I have, um, I mean, Training business is baseball conditioning at baseballstrength.com, and I also do fitness video productions at fitnessvideoproduction.com. My name is Jason White. I am a trainer in New York, and last year I started strengthradio.com, which is an internet fitness talk radio show <coughs> featuring the original fitness podcast. <laughs> My name is Zach Evanish, and um, I have a business where I train uh, combat athletes as well as making products for combat athletes around the world. And that website is combatgrappler.com, and I'm located in New Jersey. Jason C. Brown, I run kettlebellathletics.com and kettlebelltrainingforsport.com. It's a sports performance firm centered around uh, kettlebell training for sport. Next, we'll go to Tony, down at the end of the table here. My name is Tony Books Velez, I'm a fitness professional. I run two, uh, two internet businesses. One is thebodyhouse.com, where I, I, my clients get information regarding weight loss and health and fitness. The other one is fitnessproductsmadesimple.com, which is geared towards fitness professionals to help them to produce their own fitness products. My name is Leon Watford, and I'm a fitness well coach, and I uh, have run a business fitness uh, specifically fit. Um, personal training and presently I'm venturing into a, a fitness camp for women. That's my new project. My name is Frank Dolan. I run a health club out of Long Island called All for Sports and Fitness. You can find that at allforsportsandfitness.com. Um, we specialize in training athletes as well as kids and pretty much everyone in the family. My name is Ryan Dolan. I am actually currently Vice President of Operations for All for Sports and Fitness. Very nice. All right, so we've got, we've got all the introductions out of the way. Now everyone just relax. We're going to have a fun ride there. Now, as you guys can see, we've, we really have a diverse group of fitness professionals, you know, studio owners, podcasting, fitness videos, combat athletes, kettlebells. Uh, we've got health clubs. Leon does phone coaching. Tony does products and speaking. Um, so, we, you know, we're really, it's diverse. And what we want to talk about today is velvet rope marketing and this approach to service business. Not really, not necessarily information products, but this is all about a service business, about getting more clients. Because there's, you know, as you know, we've been taught in the past, with all the certifications we took, 
how do you, they spend five minutes on marketing and they say basically you hand out some business cards and they still teach this kind of stuff, you know. Sure. Put, put, I, someone told me the other, you put flyers on a tree. You know? <laughs> they said that, you put, you're putting flyers on a tree. You know, so they expect someone to pay them $100 an hour when you're putting flyers on a tree. So we're going to teach you the absolute opposite of that. Uh, Zach's pointing to himself. I think Zach's put some flyers on trees. <laughs> he just nails it in with his hand. Um, <laughs> but we're, we're going to teach you the absolute opposite. We want to make it really, really easy for you guys to market and really have people running to you with that money. Hey, we're ready to train with you. But we've done this in our businesses and training, and now we're doing it in the business of training. So I'll yeah. pass it over to you. No, it's, it's exactly what, what Ryan said. It's the exact opposite of, of what every business has ever taught. You know, handing out business cards, making yourself available, uh, really going going out and uh, making a name for yourself in the sense that you're just soliciting business. This is the exact opposite where you're kind of, you're putting yourself behind that velvet rope and people, people always want what they can't have. And that's just human nature. So the, that's the premise behind this. So it's the exact opposite basically of everything you've ever been taught about marketing. And marketing is your business. You know, marketing is your business. Well, you know, you, as a trainer, you know, obviously results are what you deliver to people, but marketing is your business. You are, as a business owner, um, and if you're a trainer, I don't care if you work in a club or if you work for yourself, no matter what, you are, you, you write your own paycheck, basically. I mean, that's safe to say regardless of where you work as, if you're a fitness professional, you write your own paycheck. So marketing is your business. So this is a completely different way at looking at marketing. We're going to talk about promoting yourself. We're going to talk about advertising, publicity, you know, using the media for free exposure. Uh, we'll get a little bit about prospecting and you know the actual selling, how much easier selling is because of this type of approach. And uh, you know, we're yeah. going to talk about and, and using information products. We're not going to talk about information products. We are going to talk about uh, positioning yourself as an expert a little bit using information products because that, you know, that just strengthens your velvet rope. Yep. So with that being said, let's go now to the next slide. Thank you, Dan Huff. I'll give you a little plug, Fitness Video Productions. See, for helping us out, you get the free plug. Dot com. <laughs> Dot com. Uh, people want what they can't have. And this is really the essence of Velvet Rope marketing. I mean, everything we're going to talk about today is all about people want what they can't have. Uh, do you have anything to add about it? I mean, that's, it's, that's really it. You know, as, as, uh, <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, we'll see you later. Now, one of the things I was talking to Ryan is uh, I was at, at Ryan's home today. And he's got a daughter who's not, what, not even two years old? Almost two. Yeah. yeah, she's almost two years old. And she basically wants what she can't have. Yeah, she's <laughs> a little kid. But all, I mean, no matter what, you know, obviously kids become adults. And all adults are, are big kids. And we all want what we can't have, whether it's, whether it's a little girl who wants potato chips. She wanted the potato chips. She wanted she potato have chips, them. but she wasn't allowed to have potato chips. So no matter what else you put in front of her, what does she want? And she looked all over the house for those potato chips. Yeah. And it's just very important to know human nature is you always want what you can't have to some extent. And then the key word there is, is want. You know, this isn't, you know, this isn't creating an artificial, this isn't creating an artificial demand. This isn't getting people to just, it's not getting people to, to, to want something. It's what they already want. Yeah. All right. I mean, people want to become physically fit. People want to become lean. People want to, you know, get the six pack abs, those are the things that people want. So you can deliver what they want and you just kind of tease them a little bit and say, well, I got what you want, but you can't have it. And that's what, that's what makes this you know, so interesting and so unique. Yeah, and again, it's the opposite of the, I guess I'll use the analogy of putting flyers on a tree, where you're trying to shove it in everyone's face saying, oh, you want, you want to get six packs and here's how to do it and we'll help you and we'll do all this stuff. And you're, you're always in their face as opposed to saying, we can get you the six pack abs, we'll do all that stuff. But I don't know if you're right for me either. And you, once you start, to, and we're going to talk a lot about the taking away. It's amazing the psychology of it, how everything changes. It, it, it really flips everything around. And again, this is all about a service business. This is not information products. This isn't, you know, they have to jump through hoops to buy a, a book or video. This is all about training and a service and people signing up for training. So. Yeah. And then the last thing would be, uh, in a sense, having a velvet rope around your business. It, you know, obviously, you're not going to have a physical velvet rope. So this is, in essence, an illusion. You know, you are going to, you know, and, and something that needs to be said up front is you know, we have some pretty successful people in this room, but some of the people who are going to be watching this DVD are going to be at varying degrees of their career. Your, your, velvet, your, excuse me, your velvet rope can be, can, uh, has different varying degrees of, you know, what you can do, what you can't do in terms of how strong you can use that takeaway approach. So we'll talk about that, but it's just important to know that in essence, your velvet rope you know, is an illusion. So it's, yeah. that's just a... You know, just keep that in mind that 
you know, there is no physical velvet rope. It's an illusion. <laughs> and as you create it, and as you get better at this, and as your service becomes better, you know, that, that velvet rope will just become almost like an invisible wall where people are banging, banging on it, trying to get in. Absolutely. So let's go to the next one. And basically what we did was we broke down the velvet rope marketing into five laws. And that's what we're going to spend time on today. We're going to talk about each of the laws, and we're going to really go into depth about each of them today. So let's start with, before we get into any law, we've got to do some pre-law, right? Jim, I'll let you start with the pre-law. Pre -law. Okay. Pre -law. Before the laws. Before the laws. Uh, do all these laws apply to you? It depend, again, it depends upon your business. It depends upon where you are in your career. These laws don't necessarily all apply to you. In other words, all the things that we're going to talk about today, their concepts, their ideas, there's things that you can use to varying, de varying degrees of success. So it's very important to know that we're not just saying, okay, this is the way that you do it and, this, and that's it. Okay? This stuff, the, the, all the concepts and ideas work, it's just a matter of how they'll work for you. It can depend upon what you charge, it can t depend upon the area of the country or the world that you live in. Um, yeah. The type of service that you, that you offer, the, 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 your niche, your unique selling position, all these things are going to have varying, uh, they're, they're variables. Okay? So those, it's, it's important to know that these laws, not all of them necessarily apply, but you can take a lot of these concepts and apply a lot of them immediately. Yep. And as Jim said, you know, it depends how much you charge. This is not a license to overcharge. Just, you know, just by incorporating the velvet rope marketing system, it doesn't mean you could all of a sudden charge $500 an hour and people could be driving to you. And, and it's not, like as we said, it's not a license to overcharge. And we're going to we're gonna talk about that in terms of mm -hmm. pricing right and making sure that it's the most effective pricing because some people think if they're hard to reach, now all of a sudden you could charge whatever you want. It's just not the case. Yeah. So we don't want you to think you can incorporate this and all of a sudden charge 1000 bucks an hour. It just, it's just not reality. So yeah. let's go. So what, I'll add one last thing to that. What it should be is it's not a license overcharge. However, it's almost a license to make your life easy because, oh, yeah. what, because what happens is if you have competitive, price, if you have competitive prices you know, with uh, other trainers, this is what will completely separate you and just literally drive business to you, you know, regardless of the, you know, because the prices are about the same. Um, so you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're going to be around that, around that person's price, you know, your, local, your nearest competitors. This will just make your life so easy because it'll basically just be, you know, somebody comes to you and it's a sale. Yeah. This is what it really is making your life easy. It will, uh, it really will. If there's, if Jim and I are both training and we're both charging, let's say, eighty dollars an hour, and I'm incorporating this type of marketing, and Jim's doing the traditional business cards and the other way to market, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna have all the customers. I mean, I'm gonna have people yeah. knocking down my door, and Jim's gonna have to do all this, the cold calls and sales calls and all that ridiculous stuff that I, I just don't want to do. Yeah. So it's all about making life easy and more effective. Absolutely. Let's start with law number one. Law number one. Okay. This is the one law that cannot be broken. Okay. This is the one law that cannot be broken. It applies to everybody. And that is you must provide exceptional, extraordinary service and results. Okay. None of this stuff works unless you provide results to people. You know, this isn't, you know, that's where the illusion completely disappears if you're not providing <coughs> results to your, to your clients. So, that's why this law cannot be broken. You know, there's, there is no getting around you know, providing results for people. And just... Uh, well, let me, let me just bring up one quick example. Yeah. Before we started taping, we were speaking with one of the professionals here, and we're not going to mention the name or the company or the system, uh, but we were talking about how this certain training system that this person took uh, taught him to train clients a certain way. I guess we'll put it like, we won't want to give away too much information, but basically this way is not effective in training. And so therefore, it was just, it's just not a great way to mark. How, how can I, you know what I'm trying to say? Um, it was the, the, the actual training service was not giving clients results. So these people are not making any money. They're not getting new clients because once one person signs up and they're not getting results, it just, the process ends there because why are people going to be beating down your door? You know, yeah. if, if, you were, if you're a trainer and, you teach, and your niche market is helping basketball players jump five inches higher and your first basketball player increases their jump by one inch, you're not going to get many more people to try it out. So uh, it's, it's got to work. Your services have got to work. And you guys all in this audience are very competent professionals. And hopefully everyone listening to this right now is a competent professional. But this, if you're not doing good services, if you're just a scam and doing this really ridiculous training program that doesn't work, everything else is going to fall apart from there. Sure. And then it's all pretty much basic stuff. It's you know, keeping up with your education, uh, latest surf not, it's keeping up the latest training methods. It's being very innovative. It's being very unique. And 
And you have to, again, it's, it's separating yourself in that way. The more unique you are in any business, in, in anything, the better off you're going to be, provided it provides results. And then the other thing would be, you know, stop babysitting people and start coaching. And as, you know, everybody in this room realizes, personal training is supposed to be much more than just babysitting people and counting reps. It's supposed to be motivation and education and coaching, uh, dealing with emotional issues, referring to other professionals when necessary. Uh, you know, you may have you may have people who have emotional eating disorders or emotional eating issues that they need to see somebody other than yourself. You know, it's it's being a true professional and providing those other services, not yourself, but having a rolodex of people that you can refer to, that really makes your service all encompassing. So that when people come to you, they're not just getting six pack abs for six months; they're getting you know six pack abs and a healthy life and everything else for the rest of their life. That's what this is about, and that's what's going to separate you. Yep, absolutely. Uh, actually, for one sec, because I know we're talking about innovative training that works, because I know uh, Jason Brown back there in the corner does really innovative training with kettlebells. If you want to just tell the group just for a minute just about the kind of training you do. I know it's a little off topic, Mark, but I figured just to just talk about the, the types of stuff you do with your clients. Just give us a little um, yeah. It's really dynamic. Uh, sort of non-stop, pretty much for 20 or 30 minutes kettlebell work. Um, complexes, kettlebell complex is something I call kettlebell couplets, which is a full body holistic movement coupled with a body weight movement, um, working the antagonistic or, or the opposite uh, movement pattern. Um, you can accomplish a lot of work in very little time, 15, 20 minutes. You're out, you're in, and you're out. And, and most importantly though, your clients get results with you. Yeah. In, in a short amount of time. Yeah. But 40, it's yeah. 45, <clears throat> 50 minutes a week. Yeah. They all reduce their body fat. They all feel more explosive. They all mm -hmm. feel. Yeah. yeah. But again, just that, and the reason I brought that up is just to give you an example that it doesn't have to be the old school way of training where, you know, we've all been taught. I know like when I got my master's in exercise science, everything, you know, 20 to 30 minutes of aerobics, two to three times a week, and then the exercise bench, you know, upper body, lower body, bench press, lat pull down. It doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be so boring and dry and you could innovate and you could try new things that are gonna get your clients results. So I just wanted to just bring that up. Yeah. Let's Excellent point. Well, thank you, Nice time. Certainly, okay. <laughs> talking more we're about- having fun. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay, just as we were talking about, um, getting results, media buzz versus consumer buzz. Basically that would be uh, when, if you were in the media, say you're incredibly good at getting, getting publicity and promoting yourself and, and doing all these wonderful things, but what, and the media, you are a media darling, essentially. You know, you're always on TV, you're always in the paper, and everything you're writing is, you know, it's pretty generic and you just happen to have some good contacts. That would be a media buzz, and people you know, may swarm to you initially because they see your name in the paper, they, they've heard about you, but the difference between media buzz and consumer buzz is, what are, the, what are the people who you're working with actually talking about? So just because you're getting media buzz and, and you're in the, you have a lot of publicity doesn't mean you're necessarily gonna have a great business because if, especially if you have a lot of exposure and then you have a business that doesn't get people results, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna go out of business really, really fast because the consumer buzz is what we want. We're gonna talk about publicity and it's certainly very important and it's gonna be, it's gonna drive your velvet rope. But, you know, consumer, bu consumer buzz Basically, what are your clients saying about you? Two completely different things. And then also we just put a, a picture there of uh, <laughs> I, the segue. Yeah, when, when Jim and I were talking about difference between media and consumer buzz, the first thing that came to my mind was the segue, and you guys have probably heard about this, right? This thing that was supposed to train, change the way we all walk forever. And it was huge media buzz, but no one really <laughs> ever bought the thing. It just kind of died out, but it was supposed to be the next biggest thing in the world. That was media buzz, that wasn't consumer buzz. And I know it's a product, but it just sort of it's an extreme example, but it just shows you the difference between media and consumer buzz. So. Absolutely. Okay, Dan. Number two. Law number two. All right, I'll bring it up, and then this is, this is Ryan's specialty. So, the stronger your unique selling position is, the easier it is to create your velvet rope, and the stronger your velvet rope is going to be. The more unique you are, the better off. I mean, Jason was a perfect example with kettlebells. You know, if you can separate yourself from your competition, the easier it is to create that velvet rope. I mean, it's going to be almost instantaneous. If, and, uh, you know, <coughs> something that I always like to talk about, if you can combine fun with fitness, gold mine. Okay? You can combine fun with fitness, that's an absolute gold mine. That's, that's, to me, that would be the strongest unique selling position because a lot of people in this country 
don't exercise because they just don't view it as fun. So mm -hmm. you yeah. take away the unique selling position. Let's That's go to the next slide. Yeah, th as Jim said, this is the essence of your business. This is, uh, and this is where a lot of trainers go wrong. They just try to be a trainer for everyone. They try to do their own thing, and they just say, hey, I'm going to help everybody, and they have this really generic watered-down marketing. But when you're, and your USP can be based on whether it's your service, whether it's results, whether it's your niche. Like, Dan, hey, your, your USP, I guess, is your niche market is baseball players, right? Like, that's what you primarily focus on. So right away when you're marketing, everything's focused on baseball players. So now it's easier to reach all of your potential clients. Mm -hmm. And now you're working with a lot of baseball players, correct? So sure. the more targeted, and, and people get very scared that, well, I don't want to target too much because then I'm going to leave all this potential business you know, off the table, right? They get, they get nervous. And they, you know, I'm sure you've heard that before. Sure. Um, but I, I, don't, I think, personally, that's incorrect because I think the more niche, as long as it's a good niche market, and speaking of a choosing a market that might be not the best, Zach, why don't you tell us a little bit about I love putting you on the spot. Because um, you had tra you tried at the beginning just to niche market just wrestlers, right? right? And as long as, and we were teaching you guys things that work, but we want us to learn from things that maybe didn't work. And you, but you had a problem, you said, with what was the problem with your market? I well, just couldn't afford the service. And even though still because of my websites are geared for like grapplers and things, just because of, I guess, like the, like you were talking about buzz from clients, I still have some that could afford it. And, um, like a, a, a real good way is I, I learned Jim Lebedee's referral system and I incorporated it and somebody was referred to me and then they called me back and, and they said they just can't afford it. And they can't afford my prices which are still below national average. Yeah. So the, I mean my prices are pretty low. I'll go right, my prices are below when it's all added up, it's below $50 per session. And they, and they, you know, they still said they couldn't afford it. So I had put all this effort and energy into something I love to do without researching the fact, can they uh, afford this, you know, and, and, do, and do they really want this? And uh, unfortunately, you know, a group that I really want to work with and really want to help, not so many of them could afford it. So it makes my, you know, makes it very difficult to, to I guess, have access to those people because they're not, uh, bottom line, they just can't afford it. Yeah, so when, when choosing a niche market, <laughs> Number one, make sure they can afford it, because right. all the time's gonna be wasted if you, you're trying to market services that they can't afford. I mean, another topic off off this is you could maybe then sell information products, which is a little bit more inexpensive. You know, whether it's thirty dollars videos or books, right. they can afford those, but they can't afford the fifty, eighty, or hundred dollars a session that you might want to charge right. for uh, for yeah. finding the USP. But but again, this the USP is what makes you different, what makes you better. You know, you and it's I use the example of if someone. If I'm sitting next to Dan and a trainer's and a client comes up to us and they say, "Well, why should I train with you over Dan?" I'd say, "Well, you train with me because," whatever the answer is. And if you're a baseball player <clears throat> and you want one of us to train you, and you go up to Dan and Dan say, "Well, you train with me because all I train are baseball players and I've trained a hundred baseball players and five are in the major leagues and that's why you'll train with me and that's all I do," and then that's a strong USP and that's going to again permeate through all of your marketing, your entire business, even your studio. I mean, everything is going to be based on that position. And that's, that's it. I mean, that's the essence of it all. Yeah. Uh, you want to cover the last one, the scope of illusion? Yeah, it, yeah it's real simple. The, the scope of your illusion depends completely on the strength of your USP. I mean, the, it's as simple as that. The essence of your business is your unique selling position. What makes you different from everybody else? Because as Ryan and I were discussing when we were putting this together, it is so competitive now with fitness professionals, I mean, right? I mean, it's, there's just more and more every day. There's more certifications. There's more people coming into the business. You, know, you have to separate yourself from, from the competition because if you don't, you're just going to, you know, the, the rest of the velvet rope just doesn't, doesn't work. You've got to be unique. You have to have something that separates you. So. Yeah, and, and it's even, as uh, Jim said, it's more competitive now, and it's got to, it's, it, that's why it's even more vital that you guys continue to separate yourself from everyone else because if not, you know, the velvet rope can fall apart very quickly and there's really not much loyalty left in this world and people will leave you pretty quickly. Uh, whether it's online, whether it's buying products, whether it's training, whether it's training at your gym, they'll leave you. So don't think because you have someone signed up and training with you, you got them forever because you don't. Yeah, uh, and, and it is another word on competition. It's also, it's a, it can be a wonderful thing for the fitness industry that now there's starting to be personal training degrees and more college curriculum just geared towards graduating personal trainers. That's a good thing in one way. But what's the what's the bad side of that? You got a lot more people graduating with degrees who are much more competition. So you have to look at that. There, there's just more and more people coming. 
So, and if they're if they're coming and they've got a, if they've got a strong USP and you don't, then I don't care how long they've been in the business. You know, they're gonna eat your lunch. Yeah. Good question. What's your feeling about multiple niches? I think um, I think you could do pretty well in multiple niches. I think as long as you make sure you separate separate your marketing. For example, the beauty now of internet is. The people start to associate the internet almost with your whole business, you know. So you can really set up little different companies. So what are your what are your niche markets right now? Um, menopausal women. Okay. And um, post pregnancy. And post pregnancy. Yeah. So menopausal and post pregnancy. So, so the post pregnancy you're talking about right after they give. So the, some women are maybe in the mid twenties to mid thirties, somewhere around that age. Yeah. Exactly. And the menopausal will be. Forty to forty. Forty. Okay. So it's two different. Market. I mean, they're both women, obviously. Yeah. Um, although that would be, uh, I mean, I would probably separate those two, though. I mean, you can definitely, you could set up two different websites and two different companies completely based on that type of training. Uh, do you have any trainers working for you? No. No. So it's just you. So it, it gets a little trickier because when you're out there in the public and you're promoting yourself, now all of a sudden you're speaking at one part and they're like, didn't, wait, didn't Tony speak about postmenopausal? No, isn't he post? So um, they're kind of closely related. What do you think about that? It's, it's, I think it would I mean, work pretty easily. It depends. Like if you were to speak or something, you, know, you would definitely want to gear a talk to your, towards your audience, something like that. But I was just as soon as you said, I was thinking about what could be your thirty-second commercial, or your elevator, your elevator speech, and it would basically be, you know, I, I have a very specialized business. You know, I work with two types of clients. I work with postpartum women, and I work with premenopausal women. And the reason I work with them. And I get so I get great results is because they're fed up with everything else that they've tried. Mm -hmm. They don't want to, you know. They realize that they could read a book, but they want results faster. You know, things like that. So you could just say I'm a very great word, specialized. You are mm -hmm. very specialized, and you can have multiple niches within those specializations. You can't say uh, I work with postmenopausal women, you know, postpartum, baseball players, yeah. soccer, you know, you can't do that, but if you had a couple of specialties, especially with women that are related like that, you could definitely, you could definitely do that. Yeah. And it would just be, and those are key words, I have a very specialized fitness firm, something along those lines, and then you would just say what your two niches yeah, are. Yeah, especially because they are so closely related, like it would be really hard to say in the same speech as Jim said, you know, I work with postmenopausal women and professional basketball players, because you're just late. If, if I'm postmenopausal woman, oh, thank God I'm not. Um, I'd be like, well, you're training me and a professional basketball player. What's going? You know, it, we're completely different. So I think you could definitely work the, those. If those if those are your two niche markets, I think you can work them both. Absolutely. Yeah. And the other thing is, just as you create buzz around yourself and you know, as you create referrals, there's there's always going to be people who know that you've gotten results for those women. But there's always going to be a husband, I'm sure, who who knows what you've done and who's, who wants to come in and you know so it's really just taking your unique selling position in that niche and just focusing your marketing on that and then the word of mouth and the buzz and the referrals can all be you know a matter and then again that depends upon the degree of you know, your business how successful you are how many of those women are in your you know in your area that can actually train with you uh, because that can be you know you can you could literally say if your business is going that well you could really wrap that velvet rope all the way around and say listen I don't train anybody but postpartum women and menopausal women and that's it if you don't if you don't fit into that category I can't help you I mean again that's the that's the varying degrees of the velvet rope it you know really depends upon where you are in your business and what you want to do you know so yep all right well num well this is part of the law as well be you okay so what when we talk about velvet rope it doesn't mean you have to be an arrogant jerk <laughs> It's, you know, don't get us wrong, it's not about that at all. It's about, and we're going to talk about putting up some barriers to make yourself, as we said, the illusion. Um, and some people in the profession might not like the fact that we're teaching this stuff, but this is what works, and it's what helps you get more clients and helps your clients get results. So, be you. That means you don't have to be ultra serious in this, uh, we say military, I know a couple of you guys have been in the military, um, but it doesn't mean you have to be a hard, I don't want to use foul language, hard, well, I'll use it hard ass. Um, yeah, I think we're all right. I think we'll put an NC-17 on the DVD. Uh, so be, no, if you um, are just like a really caring, compassionate person, then that's okay to be that. You know, there's some people who are really successful online, guys like, like Matt Fury, who's just kind of like in your face, and that's his personality, and that's cool. But maybe that's not for you, and so you shouldn't be someone you're not, because people know that right away. 
like people who kind of know me know that I'm not just really hard. Like I'm just like kind of a sensitive guy, and I like to help. So I don't want to try to be like a hard guy. <laughs> Jason Brown smiling back there, but. Uh, <laughs> No, but it's true. I mean, I, and that's the way I try to market. I don't want to be something I'm not because the clients will figure that out. Um, but just be consistent throughout what it is you're doing. Yeah, your first, yeah be, be consistent your with your personality, your marketing message. Um, and something that I just want to add is because my, when I, I'm very compassionate and caring, but when I get very serious about something, I do take on that, that hard ass. <laughs> that hard stance. And I'm, I know, but if I, did, if I acted any other way, it wouldn't come across as genuine. So when I, when I put up the velvet rope and I tell people, listen, are you going to do the things that I tell you to do? Are you going to eat? Are you going to exercise? Are you going to do all these things and become a walking, talking billboard for me? Because if you're not, I just can't have you. And we'll get more into, into you know, verbiage and things like that later. But that's my personality. If I don't come across like that, then it just doesn't work. So whoever, and it's whatever you are, whatever your personality is, use it. You know? And if it's, if it's fun, you know, if you're the kind of... If, if you get, to, if you're talking to somebody and say, "Listen, everything we do is fun. Everything, all my workouts are centered around fun," you know, and if you're not ready to, to make the commitment about exercising and really enjoy it and having fun, then I can't have you as a client, you know, because I can't have you going around just being, you know, oh, I can't stand, you know, Joe Smith's exercise program. It's, you know, it's supposed to be fun, but it's not. You know, it, that's the kind of thing where it's a velvet rope where you don't let people in if they don't share the same personality as you. If you know you'd be a complete clash then you don't let them in your velvet rope. And the reason why is because if they get in, they're going to ruin the illusion. Does that make sense? So uh, another thing related to is telling personal stories through your marketing. So and, and, you know, on emails or newsletters, you know, don't be afraid to make it personal. You know, I think the worst thing you could do is, is have such a sterile company where no one even knows your name, no one knows anything about you. And, every, and you know how it is. Every, every company, you guys all know, every company now is starting to all sound the same with fitness. I mean, you can't tell, you know, functional fitness, fitness for function, um, fitness and function. I mean, everything starts, w and I'm just using that one word, and even sports performance, you know, performance pros, sports performance pros, elite sports, professional training, pro it all starts to blend together. So you have to use your name, your personality, and be yourself, you know, tell stories. People know when I'm having a baby, when, you know, when it's, when it's my birthday or something, like they know me and they know the personality. So that's important, especially in the world of all these sterile businesses. People want to know there's a face behind it. Just making it more personal and personal training. Absolutely. Law number three. You only work with clients you want to work with. I mean, that's really the, uh, and again, this can be the kind of thing where, as we were just talking with Tony, it can be the kind of thing, depending upon how successful you are and how strong your niche is, and you can work only with the people that you want to work with. You know, can you do this right out of the gate? Not necessarily. You know, a lot of it, it's, again, it's, there's variables there. But the ultimate goal of the Velvet Rope is that you are only working with people that you want to work with. Okay? And that's, you know, again, that's not to contradict what I just said about you only take on the people that you want to in the sense that they have to be, they have to mesh with your personality, they have to be willing to do the work. Okay? But in terms of postpartum and premenopausal women and maybe taking on a few husbands, that's what I mean by you only work with the kind of clients you want to work with. Does that make sense, to everybody? So it depends upon where you are in your in your career, as to as to how that will work. But you're yes. always take you're only taking on clients that you do want to work with, depending where they fall with your niche. Yeah, and depending on the well, rule number one that supersedes the original rule number one is you have to pay your bills first. So if you have no clients and the only person who wants to train with you right away is is a you know a postmenopausal woman and you just train basketball players, you know what? You got to pay your bills. At least that's the way. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, you, you just, so we would never say, you know, starve in the street, just stick to your, I mean, you got to pay your bills. So um, that's the, the unofficial rule that, over, that oversees everything. Uh, no. So okay. you want to talk about belief systems? Yeah, belief, belief systems is really, it's very simple. And Ryan knows I love talking about belief systems because it's belief really, system. I am. And it, it's really a matter of, in this, in this uh, DVD, it's what do you believe your business is capable of? I mean, do you honestly believe that you're capable of having a business that you only work with the people that you want to work with? Because I, mean, I guarantee there's a lot of trainers out there who just don't believe that, who just think that they've got to take on every single person that comes their way. And again, you know, in the very beginning, you know, if you have to pay your bills, if you can't eat, then you know, you're, going to have to, you know, you're going to have to do some things different. But that's not who this program is for. This program is for people with a little bit of experience. And, and, uh, but nonetheless, if you have experience, you still have to know that your belief has to be concrete that I'm only going to work with people that I want to work with. Okay? It's, as, mm -hmm. it's really as simple as that. 
turning away business. You know, if you're doing fine, if all your bills are paid and you want to strengthen your velvet rope and you want to take it to that next level, turn away business. You know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with turning away clients. You can literally just say, listen, I don't, you know, you can refer them. You can get a referral fee for sending them to another trainer. You can hire another trainer to, to train that person for you. You know, but you can absolutely turn away business. And that is one thing that will completely strengthen your velvet rope. I mean, if you turn away people and, and they go back and say, you know, I, you know, well, what happened? I thought you were going to hire a trainer. Well, you're not going to believe this, but he turned me down. <laughs> you know, do you think that, you know, they're, you know, no matter what, they might be a little bit peeved, but I guarantee you they're, well, they're going to, people are going to be curious as, as all hell. Why, he turned you down, what do you mean? Well, he, he said he just doesn't work with people like me, or, or he, thought I, he thought I wasn't serious enough. He didn't think I could follow the rules. All right, now do you think that's going to strengthen your image or tarnish your image? It's going to strengthen your image because you're the person who runs your business a certain way, only certain people get in, and if you want to be a part of it, you're going to have to be a certain kind of person. How would you present something like that for you, you, you to tell someone that you're not going to work with them? I'm assuming you wouldn't say, well, you're really not good enough to work with me, so be gone. And you, have this you, you can say anything you want to anybody, so long as you say it the right way. You know, so it would depend upon prospecting, your selling situation, and things like that. You know, if you spoke to them on the phone, you could, you know, and... Let's do a little role play for a second. You sec. do a little role play. So let's just, you know, people buy for emotional reasons, not logical ones. Right. Okay? So if you were to say, you know, if we were to go back and forth, I would just basically ask you emotional questions as to, you know, why do you want to do this? Okay? My wife wants me to lose weight. Okay. You, all right. So your wife wants you to lose weight. Right. Do you want to lose weight? Well, she wants me to lose weight. That's so. not what I asked you. Tony, that's not what I asked you. I, I understand you. I, I'm sure you, lo you love your wife, right? Sure do. You love your wife, but you want to make her happy? Yeah, I want to make her happy. Okay. Do you do you want to make? Okay. Do you want to make you happy? Well, I'll be I'll be happy if she if she's happy. Okay. So, but what does that mean exactly? I want her to stop bothering me. That's why. She, that's why. She's <laughs> <going to call. laughs> that, so okay, she's forcing you to call me. Right. Tony, love to help you, but until you want to do this, because you want to do it, and not because your wife is bugging you. Can't help. You. I'm very sorry about that, but you know, you know, I, I, does that make sense? That makes sense. I mean, it's as simple as that. It's yeah. just, you know, it's very. I'm very sorry. I would absolutely love to help you. Can't do it. And here's why. Yeah. You know, and then, then it depends upon experience. Because I've literally, I was in the home of a guy who this this home had been worth four million dollars, and this was one of the biggest mistakes I ever made. His wife wanted me to meet with him, and you know, it was a referral. And it was from a client, so there was no way I was I was not going to do this. I told the guy, you know, I I set up the appointment with the wife actually, and I had the feeling that he really didn't want to do this, you know. I but I, I set the appointment, I confirmed the appointment. Listen, is there any reason in the world you want to cancel? Because the only way I wouldn't be there is if I'm dead, all right? <laughs> I get down to my car to, to to go to their home, and I've got a flat tire, so I took a cab, right? I made it. I did everything I said I was going to do. I'm in a four million dollar home. And, and the guy, his family history, basically he's good chance he's going to be dead at 50. Real good chance. He's about 40 at the time. And, you know, we're, we're talking and, you know, well, is this something you want to do? And, he's, and we took out a little bit into price and, and he just said to me, you know, I, you know we don't, well, I'd have to move some funds around. I, I don't really have that kind of money right now. I'm like, this isn't something you, you want to put on a credit card. And the guy in a $4 million home basically told me he didn't have the money. You know, and, and the, again, the point being is that I never, ever should have gone to that appointment. And if I had known then, I just basically would have, I would have said, listen, I would love to meet with your husband, but I can't meet with your husband until he calls me himself and tells me that he wants to do this. Because what happens is, especially with spouses, you made a great point. What's going to happen is they are going to do, they're going to meet with you because that's what will make the wife happy because, you know, the spouse knows. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the minimum I have to do to keep her happy? Because with him, it was... Because I, 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 I called call the wife, you know, just what happened. He goes, he didn't like you. So yeah. it could have been any reason, you know, but he did the bare minimum to keep his spouse happy. You know, if I, now if I had at the time really strengthened my velvet rope, you know, I never in a million years would have gone to see that guy without him, you know, without him calling me. So it's, I'm very sorry. I'm incredibly uncomfortable having to tell you this. You know, you always, you always soften the blow. You always, you always cushion it. You know, this isn't about, as Ryan said, this isn't about being arrogant. You know, it's, it's about politely saying, you know, what you have to to protect yourself in your own business. Right. You know what I'm saying? Listen, yeah. and this here's why. Because even if, even if you paid me a $200 an hour, you know, you're not going to want to do this. 
And then what's going to happen? You're not going to get results. And then what's going to happen? You're going to tell your friends that this guy stinks. And, you know, then your wife's going to tell people. And, and before you know it, your velvet rope is gone. So that's, and that's just what happens. Have any of you guys ever had to reject a client? Did any of you ever turn it down a client? You didn't you did, you did put, put um, you share the story? Just basically, I just didn't have the time for them. I, it was, actually, I did one the other day. They came to me probably a year ago. The guy never paid me. <laughs> <laughs> so I rejected that. I said, you know, yeah. it's not going to come back. You know, obviously, he was coming here and there. So I said, you know, it's crazy. You know, he's obviously not going to get a result. So. Mm -hmm. okay. And what about when you took the uh, I had a uh, kid, high school kid, his mother paid for pack. was like 10 or something like that. And this guy passed to the point he was canceling. And so, you know, when he's ready to come back, you know, you know, let me know. They, I mean, he came to two, they paid for like 12 or something like that. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, I'll, I'll keep it, you know, in storage for credit when he decides to return, which of course he never did. So. You're like, oh, listen, buy a new <laughs> car, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he wasn't getting the money back. Yeah. That wasn't going to happen. Yeah. yeah. That actually happened to me, too. There was a, when I was training athletes, there was a really wealthy guy, um, and he wanted me to train his son, who was a soccer player. And it was all the way across town. It was like 20 minutes away. I'm like, you know what? Let me just do it. It was, I don't remember at the time. It was maybe 80 or 90 an hour I was going to charge it for me. At that time, it was a lot of money. I drove, and I'm like, I have a funny feeling because this kid didn't want to do it, but the dad really wants him to play. I get to the house. I'm ringing the doorbell. No answer. I call him. I actually had a cell phone at that time. Called. No answer. I left, and it was, they called back. They said, oh, his, the son was sleeping. You know, he fell asleep, which was a lie. Um, so but even at that time, I knew I should have taken the appointment. I, and they said, he said, the dad said, oh, well, will you come back and train him again? I said, no, no thanks. Even though at that time, the money would have been great, living at home in my mom's basement. Um, but I just said no, because I just knew from there on it would have been just terrible, pulling teeth. You say something, Zach? Yeah, I got a story that's sort of in the center of like, what all you guys are talking about. Is I had a client who was great, I mean, walking, talking, billboard, super, so were his parents. And um, after, when we did thing, I, I, I sold him packages of three months. And after his first three months, the fourth month, started getting a little sketchy and um, he didn't bring his payment on time. And uh, I said, okay, you've got to make sure that you bring payment. And what happened is the time before that, when they forgot, the father brought it five minutes after he arrived. Uh -huh. So I thought they'd get it. I called the parents the next day, spoke to them, it was going to come. And we got to finally the fourth session and then um, we had switched the scheduler and I had eventually call because he didn't show up and I said, look, this is just not going to work out. You know, we're not going to get the results we want. You were starting off so great. I'd spoken to you and your parents about bringing the money on time. So, you know, I think I almost should have stopped it, you know, the first time, if, you know, you, you, when you showed up and you, and, you, and you forgot the session or you showed up without the money. The next time I should have said, you know, if you, if you can't do this the right way, then we're, it's not going to be able to work. Mm -hmm. But they did call me back and they were apologized, the, the mom and the dad, and you know, it was, it, it got that way. But it was odd because it started out as being the walking, talking, billboard type client who switched. And kind of in the back of my head, I was hoping they would get better, but, you know, I did have to it didn't work. Me. Yeah. So something that, the conditions of training, something very important to point out is that whether it's depending upon how you sell the first meeting, you know, whenever you have that first initial face-to-face -face contact with that person and they become a client, it's critically important that you go over everything that's, that are the conditions of your training and what is possible you know, of what can happen in terms of them being fired. You, know? you, can, you have to agree on everything. And not just give them a piece of paper that says, this is you know, our cancellation policy, just you know, look it over and, and sign your name. You go over absolutely everything with them in terms of cancellation policy, rescheduling, you know, what commitments they're expected to make in terms of training on their, on their own, you know, eating, all those kinds of things. And again, that depends upon your training system, the clientele that you're working with, how, you know, how fast they're going to change their diet and things like that. I mean, that's up to you guys. But they have to know up front when they become a client everything that you know, they're required. And they also, you also need to be sure that they understand that if they, you know, failure to comply could lead to them being fired as a client. Should you use that term, Jim? What's that? Should you use that term, you think? Absolutely. You know, I reserve the right to fire you as a client. <laughs> and again, you can soften the blow and say, listen, this might seem kind of strange seeing as you're a brand new client, but I reserve the right to fire a client, and here is why. You know? Yeah. All right? it's, and you can, it's showing how serious you are about, I mean, imagine, you know, 
no, there's no <laughs> trainers that would ever say that because it's usually the way the trainers approach the client is like almost like the client like the trainers like begging for business you know oh I'll do any, you know well, yeah, sure we'll make the appointment then and I'll do I'll do anything I can and they're just almost begging the client to take them on as opposed to you it's almost what well, we you know it's called the takeaway it's like it's like well you know maybe I'm not maybe you're not right for me either as you know you're, maybe you're not the right client for me, and I reserve the right to fire you if you're not doing what I say. And it's a, as we say up here, it's a two-way street. It's not just you're the one giving and giving and giving, and the, the client just kind of sitting back. No. The client has to. Yeah, it's a two-way street because it's a different way of looking at your business. You know, it, 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 this is personal training, but it's a relationship, right? I mean, it's it's client trainer relationship, and they have to do their part. You I mean the client just can't? I personally think it's one of the reasons that this country is so fat. I mean, people don't take responsibility, they're not held accountable for anything, you're going to hold them accountable. And if they, they, they don't comply, they're getting fired. Mm -hmm. you know? And, you, th and you, can, you think they want to say, you know, how's your training going? Oh, <laughs> my trainer fired me. <laughs> they don't want to have to say that. Right? And, but it's also, you can also soften the blow by saying, listen, here's the thing, I reserve the right to fire you because it's, it's, it's a two-way street and go over all those things. But you can also cushion the blow by saying, listen, I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste your money. You know, I'm sure you have other things to be doing besides training if you're not going to comply. So just you, your, you know, use those words there. So that kind of, because then they'll think, oh, that's true. If I'm not doing this, why am I going to be wasting any of my time? Why am I going, why am I going to be wasting any of my money? Yeah, so you can, you can just make sure before that, and you know what, I highly recommend, you, you can sign something, but you know, you, before you leave, you shake their hand, you look them right in the eye, and you say, are we agreed on everything? All right? And, and give them a chance to back out. Say, listen, if, if, if you, do we need to go over anything else? Does everything make sense? You know, are we cool? Because once I leave, you know, you're, you're in. You know, and you know, we're in this together. So you make it that relationship. You make it, you don't want to make it like, I'm going to fire you next week. But you, want, <laughs> you want to hype it up and, and really get them excited about it. But yeah. you, know, you really want to make sure that all your bases are covered in the very, very beginning. And also something I would recommend is saying to them, as this relationship grows, then it be, you know, we're going to get to know each other. You know, I want you to realize that we could be doing this for six months, and like Zach said, you know, six months later, we're going to know each other better, and we're going to be friends, and you're going to know about my family, and I'm going to know about yours, but guess what? I could still fire you. Right? And when you do a reassessment, you, could, you, could, you might want to remind people about this stuff as you go along, because you, know, just make, because you know what happens when you get close to your clients. It gets harder and harder to do stuff like that. So just give them... You know, again, it's not, it's not arrogance, it's not being a hard guy, it's very subtle, but just say, you know, listen, I just want to, I do this with everybody. We go over the rules of engagement, so to speak. Yeah. All right. Referral systems. Uh, should we spend a few, you want to spend a few minutes touch on the referral systems? Um, okay. Yeah, it's very, it, yeah, again, this is, this is also something you talk about when, you, when you, somebody hires you. Referral systems. You know, you, you explain to people the reason my business is like this. The reason I tell people these things is because my business is word of mouth. You are walking, talking billboards, and all my other marketing is wonderful, and you know I'm pretty good at it. But nothing speaks volumes like my walking and talking billboards, and that's you. Okay. So for me to be 100% dedicated to your success and the success of my other clients, that means I need you talking about me. So you just want to make sure that people are. They understand what a referral looks like. So educate them. Say, you know, you know what I'm looking for in a client? I'm looking for you. You know, who do you know who is, you know, this kind of person? They might not be ready for this right now, but just start educating them on what a referral looks like. Because if you don't tell people exactly what you're looking for, they might know 10 people. But if you say, oh, do, you know, do, do you know, do you know anybody who can refer me to? They might say no. But if you paint them a picture, you basically drew a picture of them for them, all of a sudden it'll jar on their head. Oh, I do know somebody. Oh, my friend, you know, it might be a family member, it might be a friend of a, you know, it might be your sisters, brothers, uncles, cousins, you know, whoever. You just you go through as many different things as you can talking about referrals. It, and here's another interesting referral system, too, is you can actually, when they, we're going to talk a lot about applications, that people should apply to even be interviewed by you. Um, on an application, you could even ask them questions. Do you know of anyone who wants to lose weight? Do you know of anyone who has any injuries? Do you know anyone who just had a baby? You know, you have them actually write down the names of these people. Then when you start training them, you do all of a sudden you have the list of the people. You know, instead of having having to have them recall it, you already have the list of all the names of the people who they think is are appropriate for you. Um, yeah. So and give them just little hints. You know, just talk about the exclusivity a little bit. Reeducate them here and there. Just you know, you can ask people for referrals. Ask after sessions, after you know the first time you do a reassessment. 
just kind of remind them, say, you know, listen, um, you know how exclusive I am and, and how hard it is to become my client. You know, who do you think would, would make somebody, who, who do you think would be a good client for me? So, you know, just give them subtle little hints, you know, that you are exclusive and it's not easy to become your client. So let's go next to the, uh, we, we, here's, here's like a sample system and there's literally hundreds and hundreds of different referral systems you could do. So let's say, here's a case study, let's say you're a trainer and you're 80% full with your clientele. You know, you, you have room for 20 and you have like, you know, 16. Uh, and the way you do your training, let's say after six weeks, that's when you do your reassessment. You may do it after four or eight, whatever, we're just saying six weeks. Then what you can do is create a really, really exclusive report um, that you never revealed in the public, you never wrote articles about, you never did a product about it, something really specific to your niche. So it's, you know, top secrets of what would be something hot for baseball? Core rotation. A core rotation, but something you've never talked about in the public besides to your clients. A really, really special report. And then you can give that to your clients. You can say, well, how, you know, how many, how many of your, you know, since we've been together six weeks, you're getting good results in baseball, you know, you're hitting the ball further, you made varsity. Uh, do you know of any other, you know, I want to reward you, do you know of anyone who might be, who might enjoy this special report that no one else has ever seen? You give them the copies, and then you have on that report, the CTA, the, the call to action. And whatever it is your, your system is to get people in, whether it's an interview, a consultation, an assessment, you could say, hey, you know, because you have this report, and because you're a friend of, you, of one of my clients, you're already pre-qualified, meaning you don't have to go through the two or three steps just to get interviewed with me. Again, you're, you're setting up some, ba some barriers. You're saying not everyone can just call me on the phone and make an appointment to get interviewed or to get uh, a free consultation. And again, it's a little different maybe for a studio, but we're talking more for the training. I mean, it can work with the studio as well, sure. but you know, especially if you're doing a really exclusive studio that it's by appointment only. So say, congratulations, you're pre-qualified. Uh, call this number, visit this website, whatever it is, and then you know, we don't want to give you guys the impression that this is all, you just do the, you put the velvet rope, you sit back and never market because you have to consistently market, but there's a way to market. So if you follow up with a call now, so let's say he gives it out to his good friend that your client uh, is, is another varsity baseball player who got the special report. You could follow up with the, with the athlete and instead of saying, oh, do you want to sign up? You say, hey, um, you know, I got your number from Dan. I know you're interested in baseball training. I just want to let you know. I have one opening left in my schedule. Um, you know, you, since you're uh, uh, recommended by Dan, if you're interested, you can come in to apply, or you can come in for an interview, you can come in for an assessment. Um, however, you know, you could even, if you want, depending on where you are in your business, you could even say up front, look, my price are 80 an hour or 100 an hour, or whatever it is, we guarantee results, and come on in, and if, you, and if they say, well, no, you know, after all this, after they got the report, after they were recommended by Dan, if they still don't want to come in, and they say, no thanks, say, that's okay. Um, you know, they say, oh, let me think about it. No, nope, I, I only have one spot and it's going to be gone by tomorrow. So if you don't want it, that's okay. I'm just going to call the next person, but I wish you luck. And they're like, well, no, no, wait, wait, I'll, I'll come in. I'll, I'll meet. So, uh, you know, you're, you're kind of, again, taking it away. But instead of, you know, just sitting back and waiting for things to happen, you can be proactive, but proactive with a twist. Sure. Just it's all about the way you, you approach it. And you could also have, you can hire a virtual assistant, have your virtual assistant do the, phone, the outgoing yeah, phone calls. Which would be even better. Yeah, which is even more powerful because you're so busy wor working with your clients that you don't even have time to do follow-up calls. Yeah, I mean, that, that I would probably do the assistant. Um, hi, I'm calling on, the, on behalf of Jim Labady, or I'm calling on behalf of Dan Huff. Uh, we know your approach. We have, Dan told me he has one opening. You were the first on the list. If you want it, you got it. If not, we're just going to go to the next. And all of a sudden, mm. <laughs> they want, you know? They want it, and, and it's amazing when you can't reach someone how much, like, I, have, I don't have a lot of patience with service people at the house, and we had a, we have a, what is it, like a Whirlpool hot tub kind of thing, and it's been broken for like two weeks, and I literally have been trying for three weeks to get a hold of this person to fix it, three weeks, and, I'm, and they finally said, well, I can come Tuesday at two o'clock, and I'm like, all right, I'll take it. You know, I, was, I moved every other schedule around. I think I canceled the call with Zach. I'm like, just, <laughs> I'm like, just come, because I'm dying for this. But if it was, you know, if I had 100 people saying, oh, well, we'll come any, you know, it's a little bit different. He was taking it away from me. And I would have paid him any amount to come fix the hot tub. Sure. It's a little hot tub story. Can never have too many hot tub stories. Never have enough hot tub stories. <laughs> All right, let's start. Absolutely. Joint ventures. Joint ventures. You could have exclusive offers for VIP customers. So if you're doing a joint venture of mailing, something like that, with another business, um, high-end businesses, spas, salons, jewelry stores, you know, Auto dealerships that Mercedes, Lexus, things like that, country clubs. Uh, 
you have to understand that your velvet rope isn't so strong that you, you know, you, you always have to, if you're gonna do a joint venture of some sort, you're still gonna have to provide what's in it for them. What's, what makes sense for the, you know, for that other business to joint venture with you? You can't just say, you know, I'm Chief Total Fitness and people to just love our name so much that you would be happy to send out a letter just on our behalf. And it's not gonna work like that. So what's in it for them? Always approach your joint venture partner with what's in it for them. And it can be, you can pay for the, the whole mailing and it can be a special offer to their VIP customers, which they might be very happy to do. You're paying for the entire thing and it's just good customer appreciation. Or you can split the cost 50-50 with them. Uh, th there's all sorts of different ways you can do it, but we just want to make sure that you realize that you know, your velvet rope is for the clientele, not you know, referral systems or joint ventures with other businesses. Yeah, make it as easy. When you're doing a joint venture, um, when people approach me all the time for joint ventures, make it as easy as possible for the person to do the joint venture. Don't expect them to write the letter. Don't expect them to do all the work. If, and when I get approached, the people I work with or the people say, hey, I have this great product. Here's a sample. I don't have to ask for it. They say, here's a sales letter already written. Here's, here's the link you use, so it's really easy to do. And whether you're doing a joint venture online or through, pro it's obviously, if you're doing the service, it's better if you could do letters, physically mailed to their house on the, on the company's stationery, not yours, but you know, if it's a high-end jeweler on their stationery, you know, saying, hey, we've, we have a great relationship with Dan Huff, he trains these exclusive clients, you know, he's, since we have a great relationship with him, he's offering you, you know, you are automatically pre-qualified and you've skipped two steps in the application process, you qualify for an interview, call his assistant to set up an, an interview to see if it's appropriate for him, something like that. Okay, let's go next. And we are on the next Velvet Rope Law. We're almost there. Number four, putting up barriers. Putting up those barriers. Uh, Put it down. So the first, the first barrier is communication. Um, you want to start with the first sure. one, Jim? Cell phone. Uh, just be, people being able to get in touch with you. How easily can they get in touch with you? Because again, the, everything you've ever been taught is make it really easy for your customer to find you, right? I mean, just, it's easy to get in touch with you, you're always available, um, and for certain things, people for, that know me, then the publicity stuff, you're gonna need to be available for media and certain things. But for, again, this is an illusion based for, for clientele, for prospective clients. So if you have a cell phone, you can either not give it to anybody, or you can, you know, once they're inside the velvet rope, you make your, you over, you, you over deliver. You know, here's my cell phone number, you can call me whenever you have a question, but you only give that to people who, have, or who are paying clients, okay? Your paying clients are the most important people because they're the ones who, as Ryan said, pay your bills, okay? Your paying clients get treated better than anybody except your friends and family, or they get treated on that level. I mean, that's, that's the difference with this. But you, you know what's funny, you bring that up, because I think a lot of people get in the habit, and I've done this in the past, is you, you have your paid clients, and it's almost like you take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, they're already paying with me, they're already good, everything's cool, let me just concentrate on getting new people. And, it hap and I know I've done it, I've been guilty of this, and then you sort of neglect your bread and butter and the people who are most important, your paid clients, to try to get potential clients. It doesn't make sense. So really nurture the relationships of the people you currently have. And then the second tier <laughs> is the people who, you know, you, shouldn't, you should never give out cell, I know Jim knows, I'm the extreme, I, I don't even have, like I have one cell phone and I don't even keep it on me and when I do, it's just, it's always off and it's just if I need to call my wife. So no one even has my cell phone number. Um, yeah. Never but, give your cell phone, where people could just randomly call you and, and say, hey, I'm looking for a trainer. You know, I think that's terrible. It's just, yeah. um, <laughs> okay. Um, Voicemail. You can you can literally have a phone number that just goes directly towards voicemail. Now, Dan, you have a, a service now that's you can't even reach Dan. It yeah, goes sure. directly to voicemail and and will call you back. So, but have, and, you, have and you used it, goes, it at all? Is it? Yeah, it's great. It's um, it's an 800 number. So people that are interested in getting in touch with me, they don't have to call all the way over to North Jersey if they're in California. They can call an 800 number, but it goes directly to voicemail, and that voicemail rings through to my cell phone. It also gets delivered on email. So I do get the message instantly as soon as they hang up the phone, so I can listen to it, and I can call them back right away, or I can call them back as soon as I'm available to call them back, but they can't get in touch with me directly. Okay. It's, it's setting up that velvet rope. You know, do you think you can just call, um, who's a really well-known trainer? Something like, like Gunnar Peterson, I guess, is a, is a very popular celebrity fitness trainer. Do you think you could just, you, I could just get a cell phone number and just call him as a potential client? I'm sure you can't. 
Uh, and you've got to set up some barriers that people just can't get in touch with you right away. There's, there's no emergency. Um, you know, as Dan said, voicemail, emails are sort of a tricky subject because emails, it requires no thought. I mean, anyone could just kind of go on and just send you an email real quickly, and they expect an immediate result uh, or reply. And you can do, I don't do it, but you can have one of those automated where it answers right away, you know, we're very busy, it's, you know, we'll return the email within 48 hours. Um, I actually have an assistant who goes through all my emails and handles all the, the little details and the important ones get forwarded to me. So you can set up some barriers through email as well. Um, business cards, Jim is not a big fan of business cards. Business I'm not cards. either. Anyway, yeah, yeah I, I haven't carried a business card in years. Uh, I've, been in, I've been at networking events where people have asked me for a business card and the fact that I don't have one just completely blows their mind. I mean, you want to talk about being exact opposite of anything that they've ever learned. They're, they're just blown away. So I, can, I, well, can I get one of your cards? Love to give you one. Don't have one. <laughs> what do you mean you don't have one? Everybody's got, every, every person here's got business cards, yeah, but I do things a little bit differently. And then they want to know why. And then you, always, you can always get their information. You can prospect, you can, you can literally get their information. You can decide right then and there whether or not they'd make a good client. Okay, but having a business card is just, not having one just blows people's minds. And that really does separate you completely. If you look at, you know, I asked Ryan before, ever look at a real estate agent? Ever see a realtor who doesn't have their picture on their card? Every single one of them does. I guarantee if you had a realtor who didn't put their picture on their card, everybody would remember that person as opposed to everybody else. So everybody yeah, else yeah, just has that, looks that, the same. that everybody else's card is got to this, it's exactly the same. So don't carry a business card. I, you know, get yeah. their information, list building. You can you know, get them on your list. So this is something, again, that could be, depends upon the, how much you want to do the Velvet Rope, depends where you are. You could tell somebody, listen, I don't have a business card, but here's what I'll do. People who work with us have to be on our newsletter for four weeks first. So I, what I'll do is, if you're interested, I'll take your email, I'll put you on the list, and then if after a few weeks you think it makes sense, you know, then you can fill out an application. Especially when you have, like, like with Jason, a unique, unique type of training. If, the, if, if this potential client doesn't know anything about kettlebells, say, look, before you even, I even consider working with you, get on my list, read my newsletter for the next three or four weeks, see the type of training we do, and then if you're still interested, let's, then we'll talk. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And, again, and again, it, gets it, it makes them want, want even more. It, it makes them want it because they want what they can't have. And again, but that's also the essence of this is that unique selling position. I mean, you've got to be completely different. You know, you've got you've to have something that's just so amazing that they're really going to want it. If you're just a, the average trainer who you know, works with women over 40 to help them lose weight and get ready for bikini season, then they can find that anywhere. You know, that's why the unique selling position it, you know, really carries all of this. Yeah. So, and, and that's an extreme example also. But that's, but that's mind blowing. I mean, people will be like, what? I got to do what first? You know, they're, that's the kind of stuff that really separates it. It depends where you are. But those, that's just an idea that you can take. And you know, how else could you use that? Maybe it's not such a strong version, but you know, how could you use that? You know, there's, de there's a million ways you can yeah, use again, that absolute, kind of idea. Yeah, it's the absolute opposite of what we've always been taught. And it is so effective and it's so powerful. And not, I mean, think about what you guys do when you get business cards. What do you do with them? I usually I just chuck them. Yeah. <laughs> I know you throw. I mean, I throw them away. Yeah, I, I, or that you keep, put them in a, in a drawer that they end up getting all over the place. Yeah, and then and then once a year I clean up my drawer and I throw and them, they my throw them all out. Uh, so. Or and you know people always keep making. Um, it's almost like they stall. They say, "Well, I'm not going to start my training business yet because I don't have a full color brochure that I spent two thousand dollars designing, and I don't have these full color business cards." Just enough. It's crazy. Yeah. Let's, uh, you could even, let's, go, let's go next one. You could even say, you know, just real quick, you, if you're Tony, Tony's got, who's written some books, you could say, listen, I only take on clients who've, re who've read my book. You know? That's another thing. Now, uh, you're a published author. You wrote the book on the subject. So now, that's another thing. You, know, you don't think they're going to fight to be your client? Yep. Oh, I think so. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. He likes it. We got, see, I, if I you get up, one good idea, it's worth <laughs> it. <laughs> By the way, I came up with that one. Tell, see. <laughs> Jim and I fight over who came up with these ideas. Um, but it's all stuff we've been using and we've been teaching. It's just we've never actually sat down or stood up <laughs> for, and really presented it all in one day. Uh, and it really comes down to what we've been saying. We're all selling the same stuff. We really are. You know, we're selling the results. We're selling most of it, it has to do with fit, you know, losing weight, getting in shape, or whether it's sports performance. We're all really selling the same thing. We're doing it differently. Um, so you've got to create a specialized system. Yeah, and, and just look at yourself as, you're not a personal trainer. You know, you're not a personal trainer. You're a specialist. You're an expert. 
You, know, you have some sort of specialized system. You have a very specialized fitness business. You're not a personal trainer because there's thousands and thousands and thousands of personal trainers. You're, you're beyond that. Okay? And you have some sort of specialized system, something like you might not agree with, with Body for Life, but if you're known for something that, you know, that's that guy who does the, you know, the body transformations or you know, something along those lines, when you're known for a system, because what that will also help you do is when you get to the point where you don't necessarily want to be training clients anymore, you can have other trainers training using your system. So then it's not, oh, well, I just want to train with Ryan because you know, he gets results. Well, I want to train with Ryan or Ryan's trainers because they use the Ryan Lee body transformation system. And it's, yeah, it's the same thing with if you, if people like Body for Life and you say, hey, I'm a Body for Life specialist, they'll go with you. If you, you know, say, hey, I studied under um, who was it? Billy Blanks and what we do is Tybo private stuff, then they'll go with you. Or, I mean, anyone really who's, who has their little unique mm -hmm. sort of training system. Um, and the same thing you guys can do with your combat training and your baseball and um, with kettlebells. I mean, you create your system and then you branch out from there. And, you know, hey, I was trained under Gunnar Peterson and then people want to train with you. Um, and then exclusivity. Well, we're going to get into exclusivity. I got a minute. question. Though. How sure. important do you think it is to title that system and to give it something? I mean, it seems, I, I title everything. And it seems to me like it, it, as long as you can call it something. I think it's very important. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. it can be just, you know, your basic, like you said, uh, cardio two, three times a week and, you know, mm -hmm. resistance two, but if you just call it something, all of a sudden people feel like they're doing something special. It, well, it's a, again, it's the same it's, thing. We're all selling the same stuff. Yeah. It's, it's not like positioning. It's also as you say, it's it's perception. It's it's you're 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 selling the same stuff. Yeah. You're selling a result. You know, it's just if you market it that much differently. I mean, what's Body for Life? Body for Life is what bench, incline, squat, and bent over row. I mean, who can't teach that? But you call it Body for Life. You put it in a book, and you know, and yeah. that's what happens. So you're absolutely right, Tony. If you just that little bit of a change, that you call it, give it a title, you give it a system. You know, oh, they, you know, then you're not a personal trainer. You know, now you're now you're the creator of the, you know, the cardio one two three system or whatever. Oh, you know, what do you, so what do you do with your what do you do? The infomercials Beach Body. They had the Beach Body one two three. If you look yeah. at all these infomercials, and you guys should all be doing this. You should study these these infomercials, fitness infomercials. And if you actually look at the workouts, <laughs> it's exact same stuff that exact we do. But they stuff. call they get, uh, Power it's, a, it's a special, <laughs> and then we do a special uh, body blueprint and all this kind of stuff. It's it's an assessment. I mean, it's the same kind of stuff that That's we're doing. Idea. They just package it differently. That's huh? a great idea. You don't do an assessment, you do a body blueprint. You do a blueprint. You do a blueprint. Right? Hey, you know? I want some credit on that. Give me 10% of your profits. <laughs> uh, let's go to the next. Uh, mar just some little marketing things, trade shows. Uh, well, actually, I was, we were talking with Tony about that before we started taping here. The trade shows are not. I, actually, I, well, you, you were saying what the mind virus is funny. You, we were talking about that earlier. Mind viruses, basically, uh, sometimes you just do things because everybody does them. You know, a lot of you, Ryan talks a lot about writing advertisements and features versus benefits. Um, if you look at advertisements in any of your local papers, you basically see the same exact ads for the same exact kinds of businesses, you know, for, for anything. You know, you just see kind of the name of the business and then some features about what it is they do instead of what you get out of it, and then they have their phone number. You know, people just, and it just kind of becomes, it's almost like a virus. It just, you just do things. And doing trade shows and doing health fairs and things like that, where you get out there and you're trying to do body fat composition tests and things like yeah. that, it works for it can work for certain things, but if you're putting up a velvet rope around your business, you know you're not going to be at a trade show from eight to four, you know, hoping somebody's going to walk by and do a, you know, a body fat test. Or, you're going to be yeah. the exact opposite. Now you might have your assistants or the people who work for you, doing that, so they get the chance to meet you, and learn your system underneath you. But that's a much that's an entirely different thing from you sitting at a trade show, and just handing out your business cards, and then yeah. and networking as well. Networking. I used to do a lot of networking, and networking is very powerful because it got me lots of my business coaches. It got me, um, I mean, some clients, but that was uh, really not the not the benefit that I got out of networking. Networking was the the business relationships, the joint ventures, the business coaches. Um, found my virtual assistant there, all those kinds of things. You know, a lot of people go to networking thinking they're going to they're going to obtain business there, but really, what all that happens is you have five hundred, you have fifty people in a room trying to hand out their business card, trying to get business, and Nobody's actually doing anything. No, nobody's doing any business. Everybody's just trying to sell something. Nobody's buying. So if you're going to network, you know, look at it differently. Look at it as how you're, you, you're going to find people there will help you grow your business. You're not necessarily, if you find clients, that's kind of, that's a bonus. You're really going to find people who will help you elevate your business, other business relationships. Yeah. So, and again, but if you go to a networking event, don't bring your business card because you'll be the only person there without one. 
<laughs> Holmes guarantee. Unless you're there too. Unless I'm there too. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll vote. Eventually, yeah. no one's going to have business cards. Yeah. Uh, and if that happens, then you're the only guy with the business card. <laughs> You got and that it goes the same now with yellow pages. If you guys go on the yellow pages and look at the fitness stuff, every ad looks the same. They all look exactly the same. If I was going to do a yellow page ad, if I was coaching a client, I would tell them to do something like, because uh, everyone there was looking for a trainer. But there's a whole other thing to be said about people looking for trainers in the yellow pages anyway. But um, I would probably have a report saying, you know, top ten things you free report, top ten things you should know before you hire a personal trainer. You know, dot dot dot. You know, this could save your life or something like that. And then you have them actually go to the website or call and get the free report and, and actually teach them about why, what, are, what other things, is, what's so dangerous about it, and then you could start the process from there. But that's the way I would do a lead referral. Um, yeah. And let's talk a little bit about limited clientele. Now, this next thing we're going to teach you, this sometimes two or three words can literally change your results by like a, a thousand percent. And you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, let's hit this. Um, exclusivity. This is huge. This, this is a huge tip. Here are just some, some simple ways you can say it, whether it's on a flyer, on your website. Um, even if you have a studio in Frank's door, he could have this right above the door. Um, you know, just certain ways to say, hey, this is exclusive. This is not for everybody. And I'm not saying, hey, we have 500 openings. Um, mm -hmm. Select clients only. So that's one way to say it, select clients only. We've got limited spots available. Now accepting new clients by appointment only and and Jim did a consultation with a trainer who was having okay success he has he he's actually done a really good job of having a system we're not going to mention his name but he's in New York he has a system and he had average results uh, he just added one of these sentences I think it was so what was the select clients only he on the bottom he, he changed his advertising and on the bottom of it, he just put now accepting select clients by appointment only and that and he got so many more responses Again, people want what they can't have. You know, by application only, by referral only, serious applicants only. Mm -hmm. These are huge little sentences and phrases that dramatically reposition you re instantly. It, it just cha it changes everything. Um, so those are some. Yeah. So instead of everybody, everybody else is doing, which is call now for your free consultation. You know, you're taking on select clients. Who wants to spend their days doing free consultations all day? Well, I was going to ask you, what's your opinion on free consultations? I, well, it, it, I think it depends where you are in the stage of the game. I think for most of you guys who are advanced, I probably wouldn't do it. Um, I know I would do, um, it depends, you know, if you're pretty full and you already have, you're doing a good job of having the velvet rope around you and people are dying to get to you, I would just, I would have all these barriers and all these applications so by the time they get to me, by the time they pick up the phone, it's like they know. It's, and you say, hey, you in or out, you know. Um, I actually charge more for the consultation. You charge more for the consultation. And no one, no one talks. No, that was early, earlier on when I was doing free consultations. People come late, not show, I mean, not show up. Well, because there's no value to it. You know, if if it's free, there's there's, there's zero value. Even with the boot camp, I'm doing. If I made it, it's it's free, but you have to pay the money to reserve the seat. If there was no refund, you know, half the people wouldn't even show up because there's no value to it. If you're going to do a consultation, absolutely, I would I would make them pay for it. I wouldn't just do. I wouldn't just give out free consultations. Um, because then again, it shows you're it shows you're like kind of desperate for business as opposed to hey, I'm I'm really busy and if you want a consultation, it costs it costs money. Uh, here are some sample. I suppose make over two slides. It might be a little hard for you guys to see. Um, applications are very important. You know, you can make people apply to get more information or apply just to be interviewed by you. Again, it's a two-way street. You're not just they're not just interviewing you. You're interviewing them as well. So yeah, this could be just real quick. This could be on your. This could be on your website. It could be questions that's your virtual assistant asks. It could be questions that you ask before you even meet with somebody. You um, want to go through these? You know, and this is just stuff that I've used teaching people about sales. And it's you know, what made you decide to contact me? Very simple question. Um, and they're going to tell you basically, you know, what was the, you know, I want to lose 20 pounds. I want to do this. I want to do that. What have you tried in the past? How well did it work? What else have you tried? How much have you spent? If you guys are ready, we'll make sure we'll keep this. We'll, after we're done tape, we'll make sure we put this back up so you guys can copy it down. I see everyone struggling to write. Who else is this important to besides you? Uh, which is exactly the stuff we were talking That's about exactly with Tony. Stuff with Tony. Who, why you, who is this important to besides you? Sure. What makes you believe you'll, you'll succeed this time? Boy, this time you'll succeed. Yeah. <laughs> how, how committed are you? <laughs> and this is the most powerful question, is what happens if you fail? 
Mm. That dredges up a lot of emotions. So, and then you can, you can literally, when people call you up, you could, if people call you and you ask these questions or you call them back or if they're on the website, you know, part of the process can be, you know, listen, you know, if they ask you how much does it cost? Well, you know, I'd love to tell you how much it costs, but I've got about 10 questions I need to ask you first. Well, I just wonder how much it costs. Listen, if you don't have time to answer 10 questions right now, I, you know, that's cool of me, I understand, but if, if you don't have time to answer 10 questions, then I just can't help you. Yeah, we just, we, you know, we'll just have to end our discussion right here. Because I mean, you, this is the, this is, we're just starting, and you, and you don't have time to answer, and you don't have time. So what's yeah. going to happen when we actually start working out? Yeah. So very, those are all very powerful questions, all emotionally, all emotionally based. Yeah, this is this is very powerful stuff. Uh, the internet. Uh, so with the velvet rope, obviously you're going to be a little harder to get in contact with, uh, but your website should be easy to find. And so it's not like you should keep your web page hidden with some special code in a video game where they have to click on it to find it. Your website should be easy to find. The information should be easy to find. But it should be harder to get in contact with you. Again, if they want to find out about being interviewed, they have to maybe go through a whole application process. Um, there's a big, you know, we sort of go back and forth with should you put the price on the site. And it pro it, I think it more comes down to if your price is pretty comparable with everyone else in your area, then you, should, then you could probably put it on your site. But if it's way above, if you know the average is 100 and you're charging $250, um, even if you put in the velvet rope, you probably shouldn't put the price on. You agree with that one? Yeah, I would. I would agree with that because if it's just if it's completely out of alignment with what everybody else is charging, and then you're going to have to. Chances are you're going to have to sell. You're going to have to be able to, to talk to somebody and, and close them, because if somebody, you know, no matter how good you are, if you're double, triple what somebody else is. Depending upon where you live, there's a good chance that people are just going to say, "I would love to do it." You know, I see all the testimonials, and I'm sure this is amazing, but I got to pay my mortgage. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, and that's really a that's really a case of, you know, if you're comparable, then then yeah, it's a great way to prospect and just disqualify people. Because if you're a little bit higher than everybody else, and somebody wants a $25 an hour trainer, then just you know, don't waste your time, you know, your time, your assistant's time, anybody's time. If they want a $25 an hour trainer, they can. I don't know what they can do. <laughs> Find a $25 an hour trainer. Yeah. It's all the same stuff to still get results. Yeah. Come on. Um, so applications, with, you know, giving out free reports, especially a little bit about even bashing, not your direct competitors, but mm -hmm. talking about yeah. how other trainers aren't doing systems and they're, they're not as qualified or whatever it is. Yeah, so what you're doing to bash your competition in a sense is you're not coming out right and saying, you know, this guy stinks, she's terrible. Yeah. What you're doing is saying, like Ryan said, you can have a special report. The top X number of things that you must know about hiring a personal trainer, you know, or the t or something along those lines, and make it must know, because I guarantee you they're going to they're thinking about hiring a trainer, and they must know what what to look for. Then yep. they'll check it out because um, they're going to want to know. Yeah. Yes, and then uh, just setting up unique URLs for different businesses for different responses. If you can do advertisements in one area, you could set up a different URL, you know, for different companies for different. You could have one URL that's just an application for one program. So. URLs are just a web a domain name. You could have hundreds of them. They're like eight bucks a, uh, a year now. I just set up a little thing, RyanLeeInternet.com. You can get your, your uh, domains for like eight bucks a year. Uh, Got to gotta little, do a little plug while I'm talking. <laughs> All right, yeah. let's go to the next one. You didn't think you were going to get without any plugs. Uh, sales for time. We're actually starting to run out of time, so you want to cruise through this one, Jim? Salesman. Sales. Okay. Um, the sales is easy. When, when you do the velvet rope type stuff, Selling is really easy. It depends again how you want to do it. If you're if you really have a very strong velvet rope, you have very uh, solid systems, and people just are banging down the door to get you. You could have your assistant say, "Okay, this is this is what it is," and uh, you know, do you want to pay it or don't you? It can really get down to that. So this should really make selling easy. Um, it's a matter of kind of doing the takeaway. If you if you are doing some in-person selling, it would be the kind of thing where it's it's really. You're getting people emotional about what it is they want to do, and you can ask them, you know, if they've heard about you, why is it that you want to train with me? And let them talk and let them tell you the reasons that with all the good things they've heard and all the, the things that their friends are doing. And then it really gets down to that, that very simple thing. Listen, I appreciate everything you've told me, and I understand you're committed to this, and, and let me just ask you, are you ready, are you really, really ready to become a walking, talking billboard for me like your friend is or, or so-and-so like the rest of my clients? Because if you're not, I just can't have you on as a client and that is extremely powerful because when they hear that it's suddenly it's not you're not you don't need the business you're financially independent and you, know, you don't you don't need the business you know, somebody else will come along you'll get another client you know do they really want this or don't they 
So it's as, really as simple as that. And something that's very, very powerful is commitment and consequence. Are you, are you committed to this? And what are the consequences of your failure to take action? Okay, you get that out of people. If they tell you what the consequences of their failure to take action, their failure to hire you, you can pretty much you know, cash, check, or charge. It's, it's, it's a done deal. Um, letting your prospect bash your competition for you. I've had people who literally have told me you know, they were calling around looking for a new trainer, and I said, well, you know, well where do you just first off, we do in-home. Is that, is that someplace that you want to train? Or she, she ended up working in a gym, and she wanted to have somebody come in and train at that particular gym, and that just, you know, they had employed trainers, and that just wasn't going to happen. But what I did was actually let her, I just said, you know, well, why don't you just hire one of their trainers? And she went on to say, well, their trainers are terrible. And I said, well, I know that gym, and I, don't, I can't imagine that they are. She went on to basically bash every single trainer in the place and just destroy, in her own mind, she gave, she gave me every single reason that she wouldn't hire one of those trainers. So you never want to say anything bad about your, your competition, but if you ask the right questions, they will literally bash them for you, and they will hear that they will hear themselves saying out loud and in their own mind reinforcing that those people are the wrong choice, you are the right choice. And then um, using self-promotion, use the media. You can, you, know, you can contact the media, pitch stories, piggyback on local stories. Basically piggybacking is, if anything, is hot in the media. Any stories, steroids, Atkins diet, um, anything, of, you know, childhood obesity, the stories that are, are prevalent in the media you contact TV producers, radio producers, uh, freelance writers, editors about these topics, and you talk about um, those kinds of things, you're just promoting yourself as an expert. And one of the things they can do is then, when, if you get a TV appearance, what do you make available to their viewers? Your special report on the things that people must know before hiring a personal trainer. Okay, you make it something that they really want to know, and also that literally Makes, it eliminates your competition because it, it gets people to realize that, geez, I would be crazy to, to, to hire somebody else. You know, i got to hire this guy. It, it only makes logical sense. Mm -hmm. Danny Boy. Uh, more marketing tips. Hiring an assistant is actually much more affordable than you think. You only have to pay them for the hours they work. I know I ha actually have two people working under me, two assistants. Jim has one. They answer emails, answer phones, help product fulfillments. They can call the follow-up calls for you, so you don't have to actually do that. You can concentrate on the marketing and the training, so you don't have to spend all your time doing all these little details and just go online and look for, you know, virtual assistants. They're really, you know, anywhere from eight up to like fifteen or twenty dollars an hour is probably about the average price, um, and they don't have to be in your area. Mine's actually one of mine's in California, the other one's in Missouri, and I live in Connecticut. And yours is, is yours in Florida? Yeah. Okay. Mine's a couple Florida. towns over. But yeah. yeah. Um, Applications, um, again, applying, it's, it's a system. Uh, calendar is very important. If you're setting up barriers, you have to really sort of buy into the fact that you are busy, that you are in demand, because if you don't, the clients are going to smell, they're going to they're gonna know you're lying. So what I, what I do is I'll book up my calendar. If I don't have anything to do in one day, I'll say, well, that's going to be my writing day, or that's the day I'm doing a certain website. So I know. I'll actually look at my site, and people say, well, can I see you this day? I'm looking, I say, no, I'm sorry, I'm busy. But I know if I need to, I could probably move some things around. So if you know you're busy, if your calendar is already busy, you can even put your calendar on, this, on the internet so people can see, hey, this guy's booked up for the next three months. Um, but you have to believe that you're busy, and you have to know it. And you have to Because if you don't buy into this, and you don't buy into that you're in demand, it's going to be impossible to sell it. People will know right away, and the whole thing's going to fall apart. Say, oh, this guy's full of it. Um, and stop soliciting. So what we'll do now, um, let's go to the next slide. All right, now we are up to the final law, Ro uh, Velvet Rope Law number five. You must, must, must under-promise and over-deliver. Absolutely essential. Uh, over-deliver, does everyone, you guys all know what over-delivering is. Just giving so much more value than what people expect. Just piling it on, piling it on. Uh, and here's just, we just, Jim and I were brainstorming some things we've done, some things our clients have done, just some things here. Uh, giving out free water, you know, when I, used to get the massage every time. He always gave me a bottle of free water, and he actually added on like an extra 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, T-shirts. T-shirts, water bottles, hats, all that kind of stuff. You know, you can, you can certainly buy all that stuff yourself. You know, you're going to have your logo on it and things like that. But you can also, for some of the things, like water bottles and, and T-shirts, you could have a commercial sponsor. You could have some, you know, a, a like-minded business. You know, basically it could be any business, so long as it's not a business that sells booze and cigarettes, things like that. I mean, it could be anybody that just has has your logo on it and also has their logo on it as well. So you could have all your shirts and things like that paid for. 
Um, it depends upon how you want to do that, but you could you could literally just you know, give all that stuff out. It's just a way to, to provide it. Uh, by, by the way, it's easier to get that stuff than you guys imagine. Like even for my boot camp, I have so many companies saying, "Oh, I'll give away free bags. We'll give away free stuff." They want to get, especially if you guys are training higher, higher level clientele or wealthier people. People are dying to get in front of these people, so they'll they'll give you whatever you want. Oh yeah. Uh, so birthday gifts, know their birthdays. You can know their kids' birthdays, their husbands' birthdays, all those kinds of things. Know that stuff. I'm telling you one thing: if you have a, if you're training a parent and they have a kid, and you remember their birthday. And you're a trainer, and you give, you say, "Oh, I know little Joe. He just turned five. Here's a present I got for you." You know, you're good, man. <laughs> I know I would love that. Uh, yeah. That uh, massage gifts for you or for your for your relatives as well for the for the client's relatives. That's yeah. And great. you can get a lot of this stuff for free because, like Ryan said, if you've got if you have personal training clients or clients are paying you a lot of money, people they know they spend money and they want to get in front of them. So, you know, it could be think about anything that's high end that that they would want to get in front of your clients. You know, yeah. the discounts, gift certificates, all that sort of stuff. You should, that should be easy. You should be. You really wouldn't have to buy anything. Just, uh, just give them stuff. Just all the time. Just, um, free online training. You, you could offer that. that as a as a bonus for them. They could get the workouts online as well. Uh, conference calls, telephone seminars for your groups of clients to really bring people together. And again, you could bring special guests on the call as well if you can't get them there in person. Uh, you can get a special nutritional guest. People are always willing to do free telephone seminars to get in front of your clients. So yeah. you can record it and give it away as a free CD as well. Yeah, if you have, if you have information products, so you, you know, cost you a couple of bucks, you know, give them your latest DVD for free. And Just then it could be a bonus for your other info products. See, then we'll get started. Don't get me started yeah, on information exactly. products. And then social gatherings. Actually, one of my boot camp kit customers, Scott Colby, he does a great thing with his boot camps. What he does is uh, each camp that he runs, they always go out together. You know, everybody in the camp goes out for yeah. either they'll do something social like they'll, they'll go they'll all go out to eat um, everybody pays their own way he doesn't buy them all dinner but you know but he organizes everything he takes care of all that or they go hiking they go rock climbing stuff like that again everybody pays their own way but he or he organizes the whole trip and it's just something fun that uh, you know because you're taking care of everything it, it really is valuable and it's you know it's just fun stuff okay and trip same kind of thing same kind of thing a little redundant <laughs> um, discounts to other services whether it's massages Mm -hmm. nutritional consultations, whatever. Um, free information products, you can give them away for free for clients or for, for VIP clients. Uh, again, giving me an extra five minutes, you know, if, if your session's an hour and, you know, there's some trainers who like an hour, oh, gotta go, and they cut it right off and clients like, oh, they feel kinda a little weird, like, you can give an extra couple minutes, it's schedule permitting. Um, yep, and then a flexible schedule, again, this depends on how you wanna run your business and the type of clientele, but, uh, you can make your schedule very, very flexible for your clients. You know, if they're the kind of people that travel a lot and they're, you know, they need you to do things when they need you to, you know, when they, they if they're only available at certain times and they want to train maybe at the, at the drop of a hat, you know, you can charge more and, and you can provide that service for them. So again, it's really going out of your way for your paying clients. You know, people who are your prospects, people who haven't given you any money, you know, I'm sure they're real nice people, but you take care of the people who are are paying your bills, you know, and that may or may not include a really flexible schedule on your on your part. Uh, grocery store tour, another great idea, mm -hmm. um, and even commercial sponsorship for some yeah, of the freebies we'll that you get that we talked about before. And that is, those are the five, those are really the five laws, and most of this, all the velvet rope marketing stuff is going to fall into that. And then, just a minute or two, just about growing your business. Um, what's next? What do we see happening? We should talk a few minutes about consumables. Um, yeah, sure. Just you know, just look for other ways because if you're growing a velvet rope business, you might be charging people a little bit more. You might be working with a, a, you know less people. You know, that's that's a possibility. So, just growing your business, you could be you know it depends if you believe in supplements or not. But selling consumables, I mean, the type of things that even after a client leaves you, that person continues to use the line of supplements that you believe in. You know, or certain you know anything that's consumable that they would continually purchase from you uh, is a great idea. So Especially when you get them on auto ship. When you get a program, Jim and I are because we're actually working on a nutritional program where it, you get them on auto ship. So every month they're getting it, you know, every 30 days. So you can actually make money still without you having, even when your relationship's gone. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you could do information products as well that are monthly, whether it's a monthly uh, report, a monthly newsletter, a monthly paid CD, a monthly DVD, um, monthly online training, monthly phone coaching, things that you don't have to physically be there as well. That's just a little bit off the topic. Sure. And then being giving over time to others. And uh, in areas 
that you know don't really relate to your business. So in other words, you're not doing maybe the free health fairs, you're not doing the free fit fitness assessments and things like that, but you are donating your time to other charitable causes and things like that. We're getting away from what you normally do, but you're meeting other people through that route. So uh, just, I mean, you give back and you, and you get more just the way it works, but it is another way to grow your business. But you don't, in other words, you, you only work with your paying clients. And then when you're not doing that, you're doing other things for people. Okay. Yeah. If I'm going to spend a day trying to, to do things, I'd rather be, you know, helping people, whether it's run a charity race or do something like that. I'd rather be doing that than standing uh, like a jerk behind a booth, behind a table for two hours, giving out water. Because I've done that when we've done health fairs. And 99% of the time, it's just a complete waste of time. Um, I feel a little silly just kind of standing there. You get just people who want a free cup or free spinal adjustment or free body fat analysis, and they go, like, oh, thanks. Do you have any more free T-shirts? And they walk away. <laughs> um, and hiring trainers to work underneath you, you can definitely have other trainers working for you who are taking on clients. You can have referral systems where you know, you're doing all the marketing and selling and you're, you're giving to, to other clients, or excuse me, other trainers where you get a percentage of those profits. Or if you don't want to deal with that, you could also just, in your area, you can be the person, the trainer that trains the trainers. You, know, you can give, you know, not necessarily a business, but it could just also be on your training system. So you're charging a premium for other people to learn your training system, but you're also heavily promoting the fact, you're not just doing that out of the goodness of your heart, you're making a lot of money to do it, but the other thing is you're promoted as the person who, I'm the guy who trains the trainers. So there's a big difference in that perception and that positioning. You know, yeah. I'm the guy, we're the ones who train the trainers. I, so if you're using yeah. that system, where do you think they learned it? They learned if, it from if us. If you also come up with a name for your training system, you could also license that as well to other fitness professionals. If you come up with, you know, the blueprint whatever system and you're training other people maybe they could you could pay they could pay five hundred dollars a year a thousand dollars a year to use your name your you know it's not a franchise it could be actually just a licensing agreement and they could use your name um, and then putting a velvet rope around you like with my boot camp we're putting velvet ropes around some of the events I mean you could put a velvet rope around anything in your business really it's just setting up these barriers the more people can't have it the more they want it so it makes sense the more people can't yeah the more they can't have it the more they Absolutely. want it so that's just I mean that's it. That's, it's just a completely different way of looking at your business. Um, was this informative? You guys get some good, interesting tips, good strategies. Um, I guess that brings this program to a close. I, we thank you guys for coming. I hope you enjoyed this and everyone watching out there in the viewing public. Uh, my name is Ryan Lee. This is Jim Labate. Thank you very that much. That's it for the Velvet Rope Marketing for Fitness Professionals. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care, everybody. Put up your Velvet Rope. Uh, please sit, everyone. Sit. Thank you. All right. And we are out.